Well, hey, we're so glad you stumbled across this service tonight. I mean, many of you know what's going on, and many of us are hopefully inviting friends, family, and loved ones to, to celebrate this online Christmas Eve service together. Maybe in your home, or maybe you're, you're, you share this as a watch party, or, or better yet, when you're, one of you, maybe just, or maybe all of you, please share this, like this, make a comment. And even in the chat bar, let us know who you are. Because we'd love to know so we can pray for you during this Christmas season. I want to give you a few reminders, if I may say. We're going to take communion together. And we're going to light our candles together. So, if you don't have your juice or bread or your favorite candle that you'd like to light at the end of service... Go real quick, grab those, be prepared so at the end of service to take communion together and light our candles together and sing Silent Night. And when we light our candles and sing Silent Night, I ask for you to shut your lights off. Just keep the screen going and, and sing that in Silent Night together in darkness. I also want to remind you that if you're feeling led to give, you know, you, you, you're able to by sending a check or cash to 654 South Meridian Road, Midland, Michigan, 48640. Or go to our website at midlandfaith.org and hit the giving tab. And it's secure, so uh, you can connect there and give there safely. So again, I want to remind you to be prepared uh, for what God has in store for you tonight. Again, share this, like this, comment, connect, because we'd love to know who you are. We'd love to know who's worshiping alongside with us as we go and, and prepare what God has in store for us tonight. So, hey, we love you, and let us worship together in Holy Communion and sing Silent Night. And we're going to read the Advent readings. We're going to, to hear some Christmas tunes. We're going to have a short little meditation. We're going to take communion together. We're going to sing Silent Night, and we're going to worship in our homes together. Glory to the newborn King, peace on earth and mercy, mild God and sinners reconciled. Joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies with angelic hosts proclaim. Christ is born in Bethlehem, hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Today is the day our season of Advent has come in its full culmination, as tonight and tomorrow morning we celebrate the birth of Christ at Christmas. These past four weeks, we've been preparing our hearts and our homes to celebrate the coming of Christ. We have been tracking this Advent season by lighting candles, one for each week leading up to Christmas Day. Today, we light the four candles and also the fifth candle, the white candle, traditionally called the candle of light or the Christ candle. These candles are a symbol for us of hope, peace, joy, love, and light that Christ brings to the world through his birth, life, death, and resurrection. Christ Jesus came at Christmas to defeat sin, death, and hell so that we might have abundant life. John 1, 1 through 5 and 9 through 14 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God was with God. The Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. 
Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in darkness, and darkness has not overcome it. Amen? The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through the world was made through him. The world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Christ the Lord, the light of the world, has come to not only shine light in the dark areas of our lives, but also to offer us life and a new heritage through Christ Jesus. Christ offers you a fresh start, another chance, and the life change, change you've been longing for inside. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone, and the new is here. Do you long for new life this Christmas? We're all sinful people who have done wrong. In need of grace, we don't deserve. Jesus offers that grace. All we need to do is confess our sin and need for God and receive God's forgiveness, grace, and empowerment to live differently. To live in Christ's hope, love, joy, peace, and light. Now I'm going to invite you to pray with me. Close your eyes if you would like, or just... Uh, enter into his presence, however um, you're able. Would you like to start on a new life? Some of us need to. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Christ at Christmas. Lord, we confess our sin and selfishness and our need for you. We receive your forgiveness and we ask that you would empower us by the Holy Spirit to live differently, to live godly lives. Teach us to follow you, Jesus, not only at Christmas, but also in the days to come. May your light shine in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Away in a manger, no grave for a bed. The little Lord Jesus laid down his sweet head. The stars in the sky looked down where he lay. The little Lord Jesus asleep on the hay. The cattle are lowing, the baby awakes. But little Lord Jesus, no crying he makes. I love thee, Lord Jesus, look down from the sky and stay by my cradle till morning is nigh. Be near me, Lord Jesus, I ask thee to stay. Close by me forever and love me, I pray. Bless all the dear children in thy tender care. And take us to heaven to live with thee there. Join me as we read Luke chapter 2, 1 through 20. The birth of Jesus. At that time, the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. This was the first census taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. 
all returned to their own ancestral towns to register for the census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, who was now expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no lodging available to them. That night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified. But the angel reassured them. Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace on earth to those whom God is pleased. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph, and there was the baby, lying in the manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherd's story were astonished. But Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them. So again, I want to thank you for spending time with us tonight in the comfort of your home, in your couch, your recliner. As you look outside, it's dark. As you're sitting inside your home, there's light. I think light or lights is what we've got to look at. See, in John 8, 12, it says this. Then Jesus again spoke to them, saying, I'm the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in the darkness, but have the light of life. I think what it is all about is light. Light is what we're here for. That is Jesus. And I love how it says there that, that the, the, it's the light of the world, he who follows me will not walk in darkness, but he will have the light of the life. So I think it's saying that in this season, this time, we all have an opportunity. We're all in that same spot in life. We can walk in light. We don't have to walk in darkness. See, I love the idea of, of lights. Uh, I think candles are great because they, they show that. When you light them, they don't just light and, 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 and give one little beam. They flicker. They flicker like a heartbeat flickers. They come alive. Maybe you have that special candle. Maybe tonight as we sing Silent Night together, you have that special candle that maybe your, your, your friend, your, your, your loved one, uh, your coworker, uh, again, family member, somebody had given you that candle. It's a special meaning. It's, it's, it's dear to your heart. Uh, maybe you, maybe even, even before we light candles, maybe there's a special candle in your home that you light every year for Christmas in reminder, in remembrance of Jesus, of your family, of somebody. And I ask myself this, and I may ask you, have you ever thought about how the tiniest of lights can, can just radiate any darkness? It can pierce through the darkness. I mean, if all the lights were off, and I shut all the lights off here right now, and I turned on a, a single candlelight, you're still going to see that light. 
in that darkness. Because darkness can't take that light out. Darkness cannot shift that light and change that light. Light is more powerful than darkness. And the problem is, is the light is going to expose many things. Such as those that are, like to stay hidden. And that's where I look, and I look at the passage from the Gospel of John. John 1, 1 through 5, especially. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the Word was God. He was the beginning with God. He was in the beginning with God. All things come into being through him. And apart from him, nothing came into being that has come into being. In him was life, and life was the light of man. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness didn't comprehend or, or overcome it. So in this season... In this time, we understand that Jesus has come into the, to the world as the light. He is that light. See, he came to expose things such as sin, corruption. But he also came in to, to show the love, the joy, the truth, you know, the, the all expecting of, of, of what's to come. Really today, maybe somebody is, is, is walking, and, and, I, and I might not go be going into depth tonight, but, but see, God doesn't want you to walk around stumbling through the darkness. He, he doesn't want any of us to walk through the darkness. That's why that one radiant beam of light, he gave us. He gave us the light of Jesus to follow, to follow that light and you have that opportunity tonight, today, to say, yes, I want to follow that light. Or maybe you're walking through life and you, you, you're, you're not dealing with things the right way. You can repent and ask God to, to, to allow you to walk through that new light. Because to be honest, Christmas is that reminder. And that's a reminder that, the, that, that is the light that we experience all the wonder of God. And what I mean, I've said this before and I'll say it again. I understand we celebrate Advent up until the long expecting of Jesus to arrive. I think we need to think about Christmas each and every day. I don't think Christmas happens just December 25th. I think Christmas is each and every day of our lives. Because we're living and walking in the light. The light of Jesus. And I think about light... And how awesome light is. I mean, light can and shine and it can show different colors. I mean, it, it can show different things. And I imagine without color, what would the world look like? I mean, I even think about Christmas in itself of the season. We wouldn't see the colorful lights that are, that are, that are shown See, God doesn't desire for us just to see, only see the beauty of his creation, but for it to be defined by colors and shades. He wants to see the full picture. He wants us to grasp it. That means he wants us to understand from the, the, the beginning of creation to the end of times. From, from, from birth to death, he wants us to be reminded of those things. He wants us to, to live in the light, to live in him. Let that light shine in you. You be the light of Jesus. As I've talked throughout the weeks and, and months before this, that we've got to be that. We've got to be the hands and feet to, in, with those around us, especially in this season we're in, in this time we're in. Because there's much darkness in this world. And, and if, we, if we can see the light, the darkness won't matter. I mean, to me, Many of us, like, when we think about coloring-wise, and as we talk about who we are, you know, I talked about a few weeks ago of losing my glasses and couldn't find them for a day. And, and when I don't have them on, I can't see. And when I'm driving at night, all I see is one big light 
shining at me, and it's, it's radiant, which is it's kind of cool, but it's really not, because I need to, to be able to recognize and see clearly the, 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 the words on a page to, the, to, the, to the, the cars coming at me. And see, and, and, and I want to close with this here, in this sense. In the same way, God desires for you and I to draw closer to Him and to allow His light to enable us to see His truth and not be fooled by what this world is showing and what, the, what this place around us is and what Satan is seeing, what Satan's trying to get you to see. See, Jesus is the light. He is also the truth. And as, as light clarifies what our eyes see, so too does Jesus clarify the truth of who God is. So I want to transition tonight with communion. I feel it's best that we, we start the night and we start our, our afresh together with taking communion in our homes where we're at. So again, grab those elements, be prepared uh, to take communion together here. But I'll open it up here with this. Friends, tonight we remember and celebrate the birth of Christ. God who came to us in human flesh as a helpless baby. Those first invited to witness this event were a group of poor shepherds. They were not highly educated. They had no gifts to bring. They didn't have any fancy clothes. But an angel proclaimed to them, a savior has been born to you. Tonight we come as unworthy as those shepherds. Tonight we do. To witness and receive God's amazing grace and love. See, this table is Christ's table. It's not my table or the denomination's table or any denomination's table or the table of this congregation. It's the table of Jesus. And all who wish to know and love him are welcomed here. Whether your faith is strong or wavering, whether you come to church often or have never been before, you're welcome here at this table tonight as a Savior is born for you. And the same Savior welcomes you to this sacred meal. So in that upper room that night, Jesus, he sat with his, his disciples. He sat with those, and he sat with many, those he knew and those he knew would betray him. He still sat around there, and he passed a bread and juice. And he said, he said to them, he, he took a piece of bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body broken for you. And as he broke this body, he said, eat this and remember to me as often as you can. And likewise, in that upper room, he passed a cup of juice around, a wine juice, to them saying, this is the blood of my new covenant shed for you in remembrance of me. And he said, drink this as often as you can in remembrance of me. So let us pray a prayer our Father has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So we come to our conclusion of the worship service tonight with singing Silent Night and lighting our candles. So as I light my candle, I ask of you to light yours, to dim your lights in your house, 
and sing Silent Night as a family where you're at. So let us worship and sing Silent Night. Silent Night, Holy Night, all is calm, all is bright, round yon virgin mother and child, holy infant so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace, sleep in heavenly peace. Well, from our family to you, we want to wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. May you be blessed. We love you.